there's a player that I really, really, really like. Um, and I look at how he would fit into this offense, and I just, with Devin Singletary, just seems too dynamic to turn down. Right. You don't even know who I'm talking about. I don't. Could you guess? If you had to guess, if you had to guess, out of this out of this running back group, who's the one running back? You'd be like, oh, that's Paul's guy. 100%, that's Paul's guy. Well, and let, one of the things I always suggest well, is, is people, when they start looking at running back specifically, you want to look at their 40 time, only for reference, vertical, broad, and three cone. Those are the three drills that are the most important for running backs, is the vertical, the broad, and the three cone. Those are the three drills that you really want to pay attention to. So looking at that, who are the guys that you would look at and say, oh, that's Paul's guy? Well, usually usually Paul's I would guy. say a guy that doesn't even do anything because you're you're a tape you're a tape hound and you love watching tape yeah. and, and and don't like you like the co- here you like the combine to complement what you've seen not to be the starting point so all right does this right. complement what yeah, i've seen um <laughs> Eno benjamin that seems like one of your guys he had a he had a sub seven three cone 39 <laughs> inch vert four five seven but you're not huge on the 40 I know you're not very huge on the 40 as far as from a running back position. No. Um, J.K. Dobbins would be a guy because right. he didn't do anything. But uh, if I was to pick, I would right. pick. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd have to go with the with the consensus of a lot of people. I would say, um, I would say Clyde Edwards Hilaire, because he ran a four six, but he had a, a near 40 inch vert, and that's a guy. But he didn't run the three cone. Okay. So that's that's the only reservation right. I would have. Mm-hmm. That'd be my guess. Yeah. Clyde Edwards, hello. Uh, okay, so I want to point out, Eno Benjamin profiles almost exactly to Devin Singletary. So <laughs> it's funny that you bring that up because he profiles like almost exactly as Devin Singletary. Um, and and mind you, anytime you see somebody in a running back position run a sub seven three cone, you about that guy. And then he decides like five nine two twenty. I was like, mm, no, that's, no, that's not what I'm going that's for. That's Mr. Shingletary. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, no, oh, so um, the player that I'm really, really smoking hot on is Jonathan Taylor from Wisconsin. Um, listen, uh, he flashed at the combine. He did run a sub four four forty time at the combine. That is, um, but you put that together with with a seven three cone. He ran a seven point oh one three cone. I uh, did do the 20 shuttle, which not a lot of teams really, you know, not a lot of these guys really run and ran a 4.2 in the, in the shuttle, 36 vert, 123 broad. So kind of, you know, Whoa. good, good numbers. Whoa. What? Whoa. What? I just pulled up what? the statistics from college. Oh yeah. And this is where the conversation starts <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause he was their offense. Oh, 100%. He was my lord. Offense. 926 Watch carries people. in three years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, and 42 receptions. No, you know, mind yeah. you. This guy, yeah. you've pl- in a three year span, you played nearly 1,000 offensive snaps. Mm-hmm. Oh, Paul. Yep. Oh, Paul. Yep. So, oh, Paul. He's hit. Well, here's, and here's the selling point on this, right? <laughs> You're not asking him to be the offense. Right. You're not. You're not asking to be the offense. He already was. Uh, Devin Singletary had it. You're right. Exactly. But Devin Singletary had similar usage. Right. Devin Singletary had the tires pretty burnt when he came out of college. Yeah. Like, why would you usage. want that? I don't understand. Well, if you have two backs already, what's the difference? Right. If you're if you're looking at load balancing between Singletary and, and Taylor, you've already done that with Singletary last season. So we know what this looks like. Right. Yeah. Can you survive with Devin Singletary for the first six games as being your bell cow? Well, everybody says he's your bell cow anyway. So you can bring in another high mileage back that people are going to sell back on because he's had a lot of usage and teams are afraid of that. You're not worried about making your bell count. That's not what you're doing here. He carries more value to you because you don't need him, right? You don't need him to step in right away. Mm-hmm. So you can move up a little bit and he is going to be overvalued to you because you don't have to have him play right away. Now, mind you, some real big positives, positives here. You realize that this dude, dude hit 200 yard games 12 times in his college career, right? 12, <laughs> yeah, 200, 12 yards. 200 yard game. That's ridiculous. That is, that is beyond stupid. Of a, uh, he's, this guy's a form. He's a former, he's a former track star. 
he he really does pick up when Wisconsin decided they were going to throw the football. He, he did pick up a blitz pretty well, uh, so that's nice. Um, there's some really big positives here, and anytime you could take a guy who's uh, who's a Doak Walker winner for two, he was Doak Walker winner two years. This is a guy that screams character, screams football IQ, and I can't see why the Bills wouldn't be interested in him. He immediately changes your offense come the second half of the season, right? If you want to be successful in the NFL, you have to evolve your offense. And if you're looking at somebody who would change your offense in the second half of the season, he's it. Changes your offense. Oh, my Lord. And and we talk about the scope of wide receivers, right? Yeah. Wide receivers take a while to acclimate to the NFL. Running backs don't take that long, right? The, the task of the running back is not as in intense as it is the wide receiver so mm -hmm. you can give taylor some time off much like they gave singletary avoid that burnout and he can make an impact for you year one whereas a wide receiver you're looking at year two year three can the bills really afford to wait that long you've got a, a heart of these rookie contracts that you're looking to resign why are you going to draft a wide receiver early uh and, and try and develop them when you can change your offense right now you change it with with jonathan taylor right now and it's it was not gonna it's not gonna discard Devin Singletary from this offense. It's gonna enhance Singletary because you're gonna be able to keep him fresh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. I can. Get... I thought about this one. I've thought about this one for a while, Mario. I'm, I'm pretty passionate about this one. Well, you haven't been on, so you've had a lot of time to yourself. <laughs> you know. That's true. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the see, I think Brandon Bean is going to to, to look at it in this fashion where does the assets you give up it, does it, is, is the trade-off. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're giving up a second and a third round pick. Right. Uh, or, I mean, if you give up a second in Beasley, I mean, that's insane to me. But, I mean, if you let's just go with the picks, okay, because that's a little mm -hmm. bit easier. Beasley is kind of like, um, even though that, I mean, that that's that's what you were presenting. Let's just say they have, they have a second, third, and a fifth. Okay, they've shown that they can hit on late round picks. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. say, for instance, sure. you're giving up uh, – three starters for one uh, right. complimentary back that already has a lot of tread. We're starting to see how the running back position is starting to be devalued. I, even though mm -hmm. I don't think it should be how it's starting to be devalued in the NFL. Yeah. With, uh, this off season mm -hmm. just had to t show you that. Um, right. But yeah. if, if you're talking about a guy that can come in, if you're just planning on having him for four years, but you have other players that with those picks that are also unknowns, you don't know. They're also unknowns that could probably be in your system for longer. Uh, I, I don't know if that trade-off is, is something that Bean would be willing to do, even though it seems like – and I know I'm contradicting myself because I've said a lot of times this defense is getting older. Uh, some mm -hmm. of the players on it are getting older. This is your window. Sure. This is your window. Right. Uh, I mean, I'll go with the narrative around the NFL and a lot of people. Brady's out of the division, so it's wide open. Okay? Right. All right. We have to we have to make that statement because you go thirty two and three against the Buffalo Bills since you played there. That's tormenting for the Buffalo Bills. However, you're talking about giving up three possible right. contributors to your team for one contributor that's a complimentary back to a guy that already came into the league with a ton of mileage. You got another guy that has a ton of mileage, but he has more breakaway speed um, in Taylor. That is and his measurables didn't seem to dip at all. The thing that gets me about him. And this isn't this isn't supposed to be a knock, but he had a, he had a 701 three cone, which is really good. He mm -hmm. he had over uh, you want guys that have over 10 feet broads. I mean, because that just shows some of the explosion that you have. His vert was only, only <laughs> I'm, about, I'm about to say this it was only 36 for a guy that right. ran a, a sub 44. Uh, that to me, I, I don't know about his explosion immediately. I think. Um, the guy, I know it's going to be insane for me to, Here's, to talk about, but it, 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 the guy has proven that he can be a running back, but I don't know how much longer you're going to have him. If the four years and he's done, like I, they have a shelf life, Paul. These guys have a shelf life. Sure. Sure. Yeah, sure they do. Um, and really when you start looking at like where he came from, this is a guy that, that was, he was a track star, right? That, that was his deal. Yeah. This, this was a track guy. So he's got, that pull away gear 
and he can get to the edge. And that's something that I worry a little bit with Singletary. Singletary is an interior threat. I don't really see him as an edge threat. So you're I thinking think of you Taylor as an that. edge guy. That's why you want right. him. You want a guy that can hit right. the edge. And now what does this do for the rest of your room? Do you, you, are you still holding on to Yeldon for a year? Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason to get rid of Yeldon at this point. Yeah, there's no reason to get rid of him. Okay. So if we went to the uh, – let me go to the chart again. Um, yeah, it's it's fascinating. It's fascinating given given what you have. Because a lot of people will say, and they'll bring up the name, Christian Wade. They'll bring him up. Sure. It's, it's not – like I said. Yeah, I know. It's not hateful because yeah, he can I, get to And the I edge. understand that. I, no, you're right. And, and Christian Wade, again, is a short-term solution. You even look at John Brown. John Brown is possibly a short-term solution. He's got this year and next year on his deal, and then that's it, yeah. right? Christian Wade is on a one-year deal right now when he's, what, 28? Yeah. Like, you, and it's not like he doesn't have tread on the tires. He played rugby. Like, this is – it's not like he was just chilling for a while. Like, he was he was a professional athlete. So there is wear and tear on that. There's wear and tear on that body. Um, and as great a story as he is, and I would love for him to pan out, Christian Wade being effective on this team would be great for the first eight weeks of the season, right? But if you're looking at Christian Wade on a three-, four-year deal, I just don't see that being realistic. Oh, no, um, no. That's not the way the NFL works. If, he, if Christian Wade signs a deal with somebody and it's three to four years, it will be because he impressed somebody with the Bills and he was signed in the free agent pool to a two or three year deal. But again, running backs are are on one year deals, two year deals, and they're just it's a constant rotation. It's a it's a turnstile player. It's a turnstile position. That's fascinating. That is absolutely fascinating. Hashtag nation. Put in the chat what you think about Mr. Taylor and um, what do you think Paul should answer? Because I think this is um, that's, uh, you gave you gave uh, hashtag nation a lot to chew on here, Paul, and I think it's it's going to take a while to dissect this and, and see what's going on. So um, while I like Taylor, I, I I don't I don't know about the resources you're giving up for him. But if you're in, if you're in win now mode and Bean feels like he's in he's in win now mode, you're in year three with Josh Allen. You, this defense is getting older. You're like, listen, I need a complimentary back to him right now. T.J. Eldon is not the answer. Christian Wade is more is a little bit inexperienced. Give me Jonathan Taylor for four years. I'll run him into the ground and I'll I'll reset. I'll hit the reset button after that. So, mm-hmm. but I like the fact of staggering running back contracts anyway because then Singletary will be done before Taylor's done, and then right. you'll have to make your decision then as well. So, well, the truth of the matter is, would you rather have Singletary and Taylor if, uh, let's say, Allen has the worst NFL has a Nathan Peterman esque season, right? How can dare you? That quarterback. I'm just saying. Wouldn't you rather? Wouldn't you rather be able to lean on your on an experienced running back room? I'm kidding. It's not going to happen. I'm I hate kidding. You. I, hate I jest. So I kid. Why? Why? Because I, I love. Just. Maybe I jest. <laughs> <laughs> 